Hello everyone, this is Matt the Speedstar, reporting for the next episode of The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword. In our previous episode, as shown by our recap once again, we've won the wing ceremony, but Zelda was whisked away down to the surface by a black tornado. And... This floating girl... Ooh, Mia. Hello there, Mia. What are you doing down here? Shouldn't you be, uh, back in the... Oh god! Oh god! Oh my god, oh my god! Okay. So I panned and hit it twice, and it's, uh, cowering in fear. And there's choo-choo down there. Thank you, choo! And there is a treasure chest here. I bet a lot of people would not know this if they're just heading right there, but yeah, there's chests there, 20 rupees. If you've got a little time, go ahead and grab it. Don't worry, that little thing ain't gonna attack us now. At least I don't think it will. Uh, you have noticed the recap is a bit longer now. I am going to see if I can, if possible, have it anywhere between 25 seconds to a full minute. I don't want it to be too long because it just uh, makes the video longer and uh, a lot more file size. And I'm trying to. A lot of the times, I try to get a gigabyte. Sometimes that's not the case. If it's just a little over, that's acceptable. But if it's uh, but if it's way too long, that's gonna be a problem. Considering I'm trying to stay under their under YouTube's two gigabyte limit without having to use the bulk uploader. This you follow this floating, this flowing. And it went right into the statue of the goddess. And there's an opening that we can go through. And I thought that Keystar was gonna try and attack me, but, uh, yeah. Yes, we have now come into a hidden chamber, and... ...what seems to be a glowing special sword, and... ...whoever that was just appeared out of it. And this into this entity of the blade is... Okay, this... Oh, yeah. Yes. This entity is known as Phi. Yes, that is how you actually pronounce... Her name. Yes, By her look... By the look of it, this entity is in the shape of a girl. So, I'll just... Now there, I have been confused the first time I played through this about how to pronounce her name. And as usual, my resource of the internet has allowed me to learn that her name is actually Phi. And as Fi is explaining, Zelda is alive. And in order to find her, we must take up this sword. <laughs> and knowing all this, of course we're going to. By what she just said, it's obvious she was not going to give up until we grabbed the sword. 
And we have we don't have a choice anyway since it's part of the game. So let's walk up to it epically. Ready stance. Draw the sword, raise it skyward, and say, By the power of Grayskull! Not really. I've been waiting to do that, to be honest. But yes, we now have the Goddess Sword. This sword has more strength, and now we can actually kill Keese in one hit. But upon drawing the blade, Fi has become... As she's sort of saying, our servant. Hey. <laughs> and as luck would have it, Headmaster Gaypora has appeared and obviously knows something about this. Now, I've, I've been recording episode footage ahead, and, uh, well, as I'm talking right now, I should be up to episode 8. And I'm really getting, I'm really getting far, a little far in this, within a short time. Um, why am I saying that right now? about this. He obviously knows about Fi. And she sort of says that this tradition is not exactly uh, reliable in pa passing down legends. But seeing as how he said that she has knowledge immeasurable, she obviously remembers everything. And as such, it's going to be very helpful in, well, exploring the land below. Now, another thing I've noticed is a lot of, de a lot of debate between who's more annoying, Fi or Navi. Really, what is up with that? Okay, yes, they do have their annoying moments. And yes, Navi can be annoying. But they're supposed to be helpful. That's just it. And that's just how it's programmed. Or should I say that's how Fi is programmed? Huh? Because, well, Fi talks, uh... She actually talks a little more scientifically than... than it should in the game's timeline, considering, uh, what era they're in, and, uh... Well, hey, if if they know if they know about pompadours, hairstyles, and all that kind of stuff, then why should this be any different? Okay, back to this. Fi has given us the Emerald Tablet. Now, if, if you can see, there's parts of it that are broken off, so that obviously means. There is more than this. And now she's explaining how to do a skyward strike. It's kind of like how you uh, fire energy blades when your health is full, except this time you can fire them at any time. All you simply have to do is raise the sword skyward. Once Link takes that stance and the blade starts to just swing and you fire a blast of light. Well, maybe I shouldn't say blast, because that didn't look like a bar. I'd say disc or uh, blade. I don't know, crescent beam. <laughs> what? <sighs> well, whatever you saw there, that is basically a skyward strike. Yes, finally, with this, a green light has flown out of the statue of the goddess.
and now we have our first rift into the world below. Now we're able to travel down to the surface and find Zelda. But I don't think we're going to be leaving just yet. But as of now, whenever you press D down when you're not uh, jumping off, jumping off to call your loft wing, when you press D down, Phi will uh, answer and uh, if you have any troubles or don't know what to do, just call just call out to her and uh, she'll come out of the blade and uh, give you help. But I won't exactly need to because I already know. I played this game twice, I've already 100%ed it. As shown in the first file. Ooh. But if I ever need a refresh or anything, I'll uh, call Fi. Dawn is drawing near. And mentioning close, I think we all know what's coming up next. <laughs> so after we get a few minutes rest and all that. Oh, don't mind the skip down there, it's because I had to, uh. I had to restart this after a take. As well, uh, I don't know what happened. Uh, mm. I probably just screwed up somewhere, but. Anyways. If you remember, Pipit was wearing a yellow version of this. But seeing as how we are Link, Link will always have the green version. It's very similar to the one from Twilight Princess, minus minus a lot of detail and uh, one part had uh, one part had an additional detail on it but this was removed <laughs> yes after that we're basically out of the bulk of all the long cutscenes so we can finally get some progress done but as we leave the room fledge is right there He approves of uh, the green outfit being suitable for Link. And Flesh now gives us the adventure pouch. With this, we can take additional items with us. Here's a unique system to Skyward Sword. <laughs> Additional uh, power-ups that you can get, and uh, well, what, what am I saying? What am I saying? Not power-ups. Uh, uh, well, I'll get into it another time. Uh, just saw the news. What? TV hasn't been invented yet there. In fact, TV's never in the Zelda series. Well, then it wouldn't have the setting it would then, would it? <sighs> and speaking of wood... <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm... I'm doing such bad puns. And... Well. Let's talk to this guy. Yep, just talk to everyone, they'll probably cheer you on and say, go find Zelda, uh, you look so cool, yes, when you talk to this guy, Instructor Al, you get a wooden shield, you can also buy one at the bazaar, but if you don't feel like wasting a lot of money, you can get one from Instructor Al in here. 
now, like all wooden shields, it's... It's sort of your basic one. Here, I'm gonna click it now. If you notice, there's a gauge right there. This is, what am I doing? Right there. Okay, so yeah, right there, there's a gauge right next to your shield. In this game, shields can actually break. They can actually take damage. There are ways to repair damage that you can only get up in Skyloft. But there are also ways to avoid shield damage, and we're just going to uh, go through that. Because now that we've got a shield, we can... Uh, we're now more prepared for fighting down on the surface. So. And um, I'll just let him explain about the uh, shield. Yes, it, of course, being as this is a Zelda game, this isn't the only shield you can get. Hmm? Now we already know the basics, let's get to the practical stuff. Shield bash. What I just did there right in front of him was a shield bash. Doing this will, pre will prevent attacks from knocking you back. It can knock away projectiles, startle enemies who actually try to attack you. Like this. And if you fail to shield bash, you get knocked back, and your shield would take damage. But, if you shield bash, you actually avoid taking damage. Uh, I mean, your shield avoids taking jam damage. It's very useful, and you have to be very good at timing. Anyway. Oh, <laughs> She's just clearly a Okamale has appeared. He's created an opening to the land below. And this is already this is already known, but we've already got a shield. It's actually going to get some potions. This, yes, with the now what she's explaining is we can change the on-screen interface so it's not all cluttered up like it is. So yeah, I'm just gonna go there. I'm going to change the interface to light. There are three settings. Standard, light, and pro. This is how light looks. The nunchuck on the bottom left is removed entirely. The outline of the Wii remote is removed. The one and two buttons are gone. And if you choose the pro setting, all of it's gone. Minus, yeah, just everything's gone. And I'll just keep it at light for now. And who is this man who looks like a lady? Who looks like an old lady with big, weird eyes. Okay, someone was born weird. Uh, yeah, why not? Uh, I'm just showing. Anyways, uh, before I ever had that. Uh, yeah, uh, you already know what we are. We are at the bazaar. It's the biggest building in Skyloft. It's not easy to miss. It's right in the middle, exactly. Actually. One thing, I'm, one, one thing I've seen in a, as a staple in the Zelda series is mainly the first areas you go to are usually uh, 
forest or wooded areas. Uh, we've already got our shield. Let's talk to this lady here with all the uh, colorful liquids or potions. We'll be coming here and we won't we want to get uh, potions and such. And we don't have a bottle, do we? But just talking to her will get us. Here we are. Our first of our empty bottles. Mm. Okay, so we've got a shield and a bottle. Our adventure cause is already half filled. Yeah, the Ooh. shield always takes up a space in the adventure pouch, even when it's out. Anyways, yes, I'm just gonna get a potion here, yeah. I'll just show what potions we can get right now. The green and blue ones we cannot get right now, but we will another time. First off, red potion, pretty obvious. In this game, it's just called a heart potion. It will restore eight hearts, but we are we only have six, so right now, this will restore all of our hearts. This here, this purple potion is called a revitalizing potion. This is very useful because this is our this is one of our main methods of repairing a shield. Unfortunately, I don't have enough balls, so I'm just gonna check. And this, this is a special potion, a guardian potion. It's got the same glow, glow as a lot of stuff that's gonna go like that. And it's 200 rupees, it will take, it will have any damage you take right now. I'm just gonna walk over here. This is our general goods store. We can buy shields and uh, consumable items here. As you notice, there's bombs. You already know how to buy, you just go up to it. It'll tell you how many rupees, and you just say yes or no. Anyways, yes, we're coming up to the end. We'll go over her another time. Here we can upgrade here. We can upgrade stuff, and uh, our shield is better. But, anyways, when it comes to the end of the episode, next time we'll continue onto the surface below. Let's go find out. This is Math the Speed Star, signing off.